Afonso Henriques was the son of Don Enrique of Burgundy, who was the grandson of King Robert II of France and Dona Teresa, Infanta of Leon, legitimate daughter of King Alfonso VI of Leon and Castile, to whom Alfonso VI had granted the county of Portugal as a wedding gift. The date and place of his birth remain unknown to this day. Afonso was entrusted by his parents, as a sign of trust, to a powerful magnet, Igas Moniz of Ribadouro, who was to educate him. Igas Moniz welcomed Afonso to his estates in Crescan and Brishan, receiving the epithet, the tutor, for this task. Afonso was left fatherless at the age of three. The infant's father died in Ostorga on May 12, 1112. As her husband's natural successor and co-ruler since 1096, Dona Teresa alone commanded the fate of the county of Portugal. One of her most important ambitions was to have her status recognized as the legitimate heir of her father, Alfonso VI of Leon and Castile. To achieve this, she revolted against her sister several times and undertook great conquests to the east, even calling herself Queen of Portugal. In Leon, Alfonso VII read up the title of Emperor of all Hispania, following in his grandfather's footsteps, seeking the vassalage of the other peninsular states, including the county of Portugal, which had long shown autonomous tendencies. In the county, the arrival of two Galician magnet brothers, Bermudo Perez de Trava and Ferneo Perez de Trava, would disturb the already fragile stability that Teresa had managed to promote. In fact, the influence that the Trava brothers exerted over the Queen of Portugal was strong enough to even remove Afonso Henrique's tutor from his governmental positions in important cities like Coimbra and Lamigo, which were handed over to the Galicians. Teresa's submission led Igas Moniz, head of the restless Portuguese nobility and guardian of the future of Portugal, now threatened, to place all his hopes in his protégé. Meanwhile, new incidents provoked the invasion of the county of Portugal by Alfonso VII of Leon and Castile, who in September 1127, besieged Guimarães, where Afonso Henriques was located, for his refusal to pay him homage during the coronation. With the promise of the infant's loyalty by his tutor Igas Moniz, Alfonso VII of Leon and Castile gave up on conquering the city. In May 1128, the infant and his tutor definitively rebelled against Queen Teresa and the Galicians. Igas is said to have even raised troops in his own domains, with which he would intervene in the battle that took place near the castle of Guimarães, the focal point of the rebels on the day of St. John in 1128. This battle would become known as the famous Battle of Sao Mamed. The battle was hard fought, but in the end, the young Prince Afonso and his tutor emerged victorious. Dona Teresa was taken prisoner and Ferneo de Trava fled, effectively ending Galician resistance to the formation of the county that he had hoped would become a vassal of the Galician political sphere. After the battle, Igas accompanied the prince, submitting resistances south of the Douro River. This victory consecrated his authority in the Portugalense territory, leading him to assume the government of the county. In 1131, Afonso took a radical measure, he moved the county court from Guimorães to Coimbra. The choice of this city seems to have been due to its closer proximity to the border with Islam proximity that the prince intended to diminish through the progressive conquest of territory south of this city. The support that Afonso received from some Galician aristocrats around the same time shows that the tense environment that existed before he came to power was not entirely anti-Galician, despite the struggle years earlier that aimed solely to prevent the reintegration of the county into Galicia. By establishing Coimbra as the new capital and simultaneously as a military base, Afonso Henriques would launch all his expeditions from there, both to the north and to the south. These expeditions would extend throughout much of his reign, taking advantage, especially in the south, of the fragmentation of the Muslim political space during that period. 
On July 25, 1139, Afonso Henriquez fought one of the most decisive battles against the Muslims and obtained one of his most emblematic victories, the Battle of Urique. Tradition relates the victory of Afonso over a numerous Muslim contingent commanded by five kings. Another story told by future generations was the appearance of Christ to the future king before the battle, assuring him of victory and the protection of the future kingdom. Anyway, legends aside, at the end of the day, his soldiers acclaimed him as king and from that day on Afonso Henriquez is referenced in writings as the king of Portugal. Afonso Henriquez soon adopts a royal posture, and aware of the importance of the forces that threatened his power, Afonso focused his efforts on negotiations with the Holy See with a dual objective, to achieve full autonomy of the Portuguese church and to obtain recognition of the county of Portugali as a kingdom. Portugal was recognized by the Kingdom of Leon and Castile through an agreement, signed in Zamora on October 5, 1143, known as the Treaty of Zamora, and is probably due to the desire of Afonso VII of Leon and Castile to take the title of Emperor of all Hispania, Emperor of the entire Iberian Peninsula, and, as such, required vassal kings. In 1146, he married Dona Mafalda of Saboya, daughter of Count Amador III of Saboya. Mafalda's family had strong ties to the French court and a great-uncle of the Queen even became Pope, which was convenient to reinforce the kingdom's claim for recognition by the Holy See. They had seven children together, including the future King Sancho. Nonetheless, for more children born out of wedlock are known. The reconquest continued, and Afonso Henriquez did not miss the first opportunity that arose to conquer Santarem and Lisbon. The former was taken by assault in March 1147, but the siege of the latter was long and difficult. The help provided by a passing crusader expedition was important. Only in 1169 did the military adventures of the conqueror king came to an end. When King Afonso went to assist the bandit Geraldo Geralds, the fearless, who was besieging Badajos, Geraldo had already managed to overcome the outer wall, but the Moors resisted closed in the castle. However, the Portuguese were surprised by the arrival of Leonese reinforcements and were forced to flee. During the escape, Afonso Henriquez had an accident, he fell off his horse and hit one of the gates of the wall, breaking his right femur and being taken prisoner by the Leonese knights who brought him before King Fernando II of Leon, who treated him with the respect he deserved as a king and as his father-in-law, as he had married Dona Uraca, daughter of the Portuguese king. The king's release was achieved in exchange for a ransom in money and the delivery of the towns of Trujillo, Cosés, and Montanches. He spent months at the São Pedro do Sul hot springs, but never fully recovered. This incident put an end to the military career of the first king of Portugal, as it was impossible to recover from such a deep fracture at that time, and he could never ride a horse again. From then on, he devoted almost his entire life to the administration of the territories with the co-regency of his son Sancho. He sought to settle the population, promoted municipalism, and granted charters. He relied on the help of the religious order of the Cistercians for the development of the predominantly agrarian economy. We must also mention the role that the military religious orders of the Templars, the Hospitallers, and of Sao Tiago had in the Reconquest. King Afonso repaid these services with substantial concessions. In the last years of his life, his greatest aspiration was finally granted. On May 23, 1179, Pope Alexander III granted Afonso Henriquez the right to conquer lands from the Muslims over which other Christian princes had no prior rights, and it was in this bull that, for the first time, Afonso was designated as king by the Holy See. Portugal is finally a kingdom recognized by all, with King Afonso Henriquez as its lord. 
Only six years after this date, King Afonso Henriquez passed away on December 6, 1185, after a reign of more than 57 years. He was buried in the Church of Santa Cruz in Coimbra, where his remains still rest today. The epic life of the first Portuguese king earned him the title of the Conqueror. He reigned during a turbulent and violent time, with kings rising to power as quickly as they fell, and the many battles he fought made his most precious dream possible, to create an independent Portugal, a dream that is only true today because of the courage and daring of its first king. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed the video and if you did please press the subscribe button, it will help immensely. We hope you check our other videos and press the like button. From Rex Lusitanier thank you so much.